Hello, my name is Karen Deliot, and I conducted this study with Yael Rosenblum and Ayelet Baram Tabari from the Faculty of Education in Science and Technology at the Technion. The motivation for this study came from reading an interesting study that examined responses to scientific YouTube videos featuring male and female scientists. When we discovered that female scientists received more hostile comments, as well as more sexist comments about their appearance, we began to wonder whether this was a recurrent pattern for science communicators in English speaking channels, or whether it was a feature of the YouTube platform. So we were inspired to look at comments to Facebook posts that do not contain a picture of the author, unlike YouTube, which is visual. In today's talk, we will present the research and theoretical background to the study. Then we will present the methodology and findings, and finally take a look at what should be done next. Data from around the world suggests that despite disparities in STEM fields and between countries, overall, women are far from being equally represented in many STEM fields. The relative scarcity of women in STEM careers in academia takes many shapes and forms. Women are less often invited to lecture at science conferences, receive fewer awards and research grants, publish fewer scientific articles, and their articles are cited less, especially by men. Although gender inequality in STEM careers cannot be attributed to any one particular reason, gender stereotypes in society play a critical role. In fact, gender patterns regarding the meaning of being a man or woman are shaped as early as childhood. This is illustrated in the example here of a study in which boys and girls were asked to draw scientists and then asked why they drew what they drew. Gender stereotypes determine how women should behave and what academic career, career to choose. These stereotypes affect how people communicate with others and what they expect from others based on their gender. In the context, context of STEM, gender stereotypes encourage men to enter the field, while women are more likely to say that these fields are not suitable for them. Social media is rapidly becoming the primary source of many types of information and news, especially when it comes to health and science. In 2020, more than 3.6 billion people around the world used social networks. Gender stereotypes permit many social fields, such as mass and social media. Moreover, social networks play an important role in shaping the image of a scientist and the extent to which the public acknowledges the ability of female scientists. This is why understanding gender messages is so crucial. The well-known reaction to women in general and to women scientists specifically, and not just online, is termed mansplaining. This is a patronizing form of communication directed at women by men in which men explain something to a woman when in fact the woman is much more knowledgeable than the man. Mansplaining is particularly prevalent in areas that are considered masculine, such as the high-tech and STEM fields. The flowchart here was made by Kim Goodwin, a product designer who was tired of men explaining the book she wrote back to her. This chart has garnered tens of thousands of shares and likes on Twitter. You can take a moment and search for it on Twitter now. To better understand the gendered messages researchers received in a popular science social media platform, the current study explored whether there are differences between comments submitted to posts authored by male and female scientists on a popular science Facebook page. Our research field was Facebook, which is the main social media network in Israel in terms of the average amount of time users spend and the percentage of users in the entire population. Over 70% of all internet users in Israel use Facebook. The Facebook page examined in our study was Little Big Science. Little Big Science is a nonprofit organization for science outreach that operates the largest independent popular science Facebook page in Hebrew and has nearly 150,000 followers. The study was conducted in several stages. The first stage consisted of sampling and extracting posts according to criteria that I will detail in a minute. Then we extracted the comments to these posts. Once we had a complete repository, we coded the posts and comments. The post selection process was rigorous and focused on a transparent, albeit not random process. At first, we only selected posts that were written by a single author. Then we chose long narrative posts. Next, these were refined to include only posts written by a scientist from Little Big Science permanent staff with a gender identifiable name. Finally, we tried to maintain a balance between the number of posts published by both genders. The result was 165 posts that met these criteria. 
After we had identified the posts, we extracted all the comments to these posts. We then removed comments that contained only emoji, name tags, and or links to external sources. And this left us with a little over 10,000 comments. The purpose of coding the posts and not only the comments was to ensure that the sample was varied in terms of post characteristics and to contribute to a more nuanced understanding of the differences in reader comments. Posts were coded for subject, gender, the level of scientific language and their overall appeal. Coding was conducted by two coders. One of them is the second author, Yael Rosenblum. Each comment was coded with two codes. The first code was the relevance of the comment to the post itself. And then we coded the sentiment or emotion towards the post. We read all the posts and conducted reliability tests for 10% of, of the comments. Let me give you an example of coding from the data we analyzed. The example is from a post about hormones in milk, which is titled, Hormones in Milk, Are They Really That Bad? Like the headline, the post is about hormones in milk, what hormones can be found in milk, what their function is, and whether they are harmful for us. The associated picture was Arnold Schwarzenegger drinking beer with his famous quote, milk is for babies, when you grow up, you need to drink beer. The appeal index of the post is four, which means it is very attractive. It deals with the topic of hormones, but the link is through a topic that relates to our daily lives, namely food. The image is inviting, as is the title. It got a score of four and not five because of the abstract, which is a bit complex. The language uses three, where one is everyday language and five is scientific language. Although the text is attractive, it contains quite a few scientific terms, such as amino acids and the names of hormones, without any explanation. The first comment I want to show is as follows, most redundant text I have ever read without any added value. First, each response was coded for its relevance. Relevance, irrelevant, relevant to something marginal in the post or directly relevant. In terms of relevance, this comment is directly relevant to the post because it deals with the content of the post. In terms of the sentiment of this comment, this comment is an example of a comment with a hostile sentiment. In terms of relevance, the second um, example is a response that is marginally relevant because the post details the composition of milk. It does have some relevance. However, the emphasis in the post is on hormones and therefore it is marginally relevant. In terms of sentiment, this response, response was coded as advice giving because there is, the response is giving advice here to the writer of the post. This example deals with the image accompanying the post, not the content or topic of the post, and is therefore irrelevant. It is also defined as hitchhiking comment, in other words, comments that actually divert the topic of discussion away from the topic of the post. In general, female scientists received more irrelevant comments in dark print here, and fewer marginally relevant or directly relevant comments. However, in posts from the exact sciences, female researchers received more marginally relevant comments. We now present the findings for the sentiment code where we found significant differences. For each sentiment, we linked a sample comment. Uh, female scientists received more positive responses than male scientists. Female scientists also received more responses with hostile or negative sentiment. But female researchers who used more scientific jargon in their posts received fewer negative responses. Women received fewer comments with neutral sentiment, for example, scientific questions, but the gap was particularly pronounced in comments that were relevant. Female researchers received more advice giving comments, which is a kind of mansplaining, although we do not know the gender of the commenter. The disparity was more pronounced in posts from the exact sciences. So let's summarize the significant findings. Women received fewer relevant and neutral comments, but more positive, negative, and advice-giving comments. Our findings correspond and reinforce studies conducted in research years regarding scientists in the media and social media. These are two examples. So what uh, can and should be done? Raising awareness of the phenomena also includes recognizing the phenomenon of mansplaining. 
And despite all that has been said, scientific institutions should encourage scientists to communicate about their research. It encourages scientists in general to be involved in public discourse on, social, on, on science in social networks. Thank you for listening. If you want to learn more about our study, you can find it using this reference or just send us an email.